Hey everyone, this is Simon from The Breaking Point here. Um, I'm here to review today Iron Man 2. Uh, I know today is May 7th. I know today is the day that Iron Man has come out. Uh, a lot of speculation has been coming out that I have a bootleg copy of Iron Man 2, which is not true. And uh, if you do pay attention to what 3K Beast does say, or uh, not even 3K Beast, 3K Beast affiliates, and Mike from 3K because I'm not going to pin the whole sin on the whole team, uh, then you're being an asshole because you're listening to what two assholes have to say about everything. Uh, that's, I just wanted to clarify that. I wanted to get that out there in the open. If they have a problem, the comment section box is right there. The related videos. You know me. You got my number. Give me a call. We can duke it out. I don't give a fuck. But let's get to the review. Iron Man 2 is uh, the sequel to 2008 box office smash Iron Man. Uh, where Tony Stark, who is portrayed by Robert Downey Jr., takes his uh, lead role again as uh, Tony Stark, who would play, who is Iron Man, and uh, now in a problem where uh, he has his villain and his name. He, he's a Russian guy. I forget his name. It's hard to pronounce. Plus, I saw the copy in Spanish, mind you. So you know, I won't have an exact. Understanding, I I can understand Spanish and I speak Spanish because I am Spanish, but I did not get the 100%. I got probably like 80% of the movie, which is good enough. But anyway, moving on. Uh, this villain who is Whiplash, uh, his father dies, and uh, he puts the blame on uh, Tony Stark because his father used to work with Tony Stark's father, and it was a whole controversy about the arc reactor. Uh, which is the thing that keeps uh, Tony Stark alive and the thing that powers Iron Man. Um, so, this time around, Pepper is back, who is Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, Cody, uh, he's back. Uh, but this time he's played uh, by Don Shield, who's not um, Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard did not return. Um, who else is here? Scarlett Johansson is here playing the Black Widow. And uh, Nick Fury is still portrayed by none other than Samuel L. Jackson. Um, the movie, when it when it opens up, uh, it's an actually pretty good scene. Like, like um, it shows you the Russian guy working on his own arc reactor uh, after his father dies, and it's the same exact way that uh, Tony Stark built his arc reactor when he was underground on that uh, terrorist field. So it looks just like how it happened in um, part one when he's hammering away at his uh, his his chest plate instead of building a mask and he builds the same arc reactor and everything um then the, it portrays to go on to see showing you Tony Stark flying through the sky and going into the Stark Expo um as the, as the story goes along uh, there's this uh, billionaire guy who's Tony Stark's rival named Justin Hammer um he's around and he wants to make uh, other Iron Mans, um, so that way he can give it to the army and have it for himself so he can, like, one-up Tony Stark, which is, we all know, impossible because Tony Stark is a genius, but, um, they, they, the comics, the comic strip that they wanted to use for this, the theme was the Demon in the Bottle theme, which was, uh, Tony Stark always drinking and getting drunk. Now, Tony finds out he is dying because of the arc reactor he has putting poison into his body. So, what he ends up having to do with the help of Nick Fury and Scarlett Johansson um, is building the triangular arc reactor, which uh, actually repels the poison from his body, as well as those metal shards, which are going to go in his heart. Um, so, as, as the story continues, uh, you know, you see um, War Machine evolve into somebody as from when um, Don Shield. And Tony Stark had this huge fight in his house because uh, it was just like his last birthday party. And, um, you know, he got drunk and they fought. And uh, he flew away with the with uh, one of the, the, the Mach 4 suits. And he took it to the army. He equipped it. And he was showing it off at, um, at the uh, Hammers uh, Expo. So, uh, the Whiplash, being the engineer he was... He uh, kind of like put remote controls in all the iron suits, so that way they're like remote controlled and they're they're to kill Iron Man. Um, 
so he does the same for War Machine, and uh, War Machine, you know, is controlled for a few minutes in the in the movie, but then he regains his uh, suit. And War Machine wasn't in the movie long at all. They kind of like over amped it up. He was in the movie for about like 17 minutes. That was it. Uh, the fight scene at the end was like weak. It was like five minutes long. Um, it was a quick fight scene. It was just like the first one in Iron Man 1, but it wasn't as in depth. Um, if I have to rate this movie, I give Iron Man 2 an 8 out of 10. Um, it wasn't better than the first one. It was a good sequel. It was no Dark Knight. Um, it was. It wasn't better than Kick Ass, and uh, you know it could. It could have been a way lot better. But for for a movie that's, that's coming out this summer, it was actually pretty well done. I had no problem with it. it had a lot of action. The comedy was great. Uh, you know the acting was you know magnificent. So I had no problem with it this time. So uh, if you have to go see a movie. Go see uh, Iron Man and uh, enjoy it. And this is from the Breaking Point, who had uh, the first review out for Iron Man and not 3KB, not like totally awesome. The fucking Breaking Point had it first. So you know the tagline. This is Simon from the fucking Breaking Point signing out.